This is He Knows Everything, bringing you that heat and fire. We keeping the foot on the what on the Knicks. We keeping the foot on the what on the Knicks. Let's talk about it, man. Why are channels... Why are they talking about Canelo Alvarez? I have to do this because Canelo's irrelevant. See, this is the problem with cornballs. They don't even have creativity. They lack the substance thereof. They lack the sustenance. This is why he knows everything was begged to come back. I mean, the begging was happening for years and years and years and years. To the point to where he knows everything had to finally say, okay, yeah, we need to come back. We finally need to come back. It finally needs to make sense. And that's what he that's what happened. Finally made sense. A lot of things happen behind the scenes. At some point later on, I'll give you guys the revelation behind all of that. Yes. And yes, there were channels that were trying to sabotage. He knows everything. They've been trying to do this and they still are doing this to this very day. I mean, heck, even in the latest Earl the True Spin series, we were catching a lot of steam. The Gift of Gab came back more seasoned, more mature, better than ever. Views was going off the charts and then all of a sudden there was a stifling in the views. All of a sudden, I'm getting hit with a community guideline strike, which is really a commentator type of strike. That's a strike someone in the comment section or someone from another channel gives that says that I gave harsh language. My shorts doesn't have harsh language. The only thing that I can think of that has harsh language is me calling you guys. And I will say it and I don't give two cows flying fox. Emasculated males. But man fans are mama's boys. Lacking an active father, lacking a father for father role model, lacking a father figure, lacking an active variation of what's called a fatherhood, basically fatherlessness, basically being beta males with beta male congregation. This one hit hard because it showed you a delineation, a distinction, a gulf and a separation between Earl Spence fans or Earl the True Spence fans, which are alpha males. And Terrence Buck Crawford, the the Chihuahua, walking behind the damn fence fans, but man fans. You know, these guys, these variations, these Terrence Buck Crawford fanboy man crushes, these variations, the beta males. So I got hit with harsh language, community guideline strike. And see, the way that YouTube works is I've gotten this happen to me seven times. And I'm still here because you guys have to understand. My life is a life filled with a burning bush. Every time I come out of the burning bush, 77 times better. Look at this. Gray hairs now. That's right. Your boy got gray hairs. Look at that. 77 times sharper. And you know, gray means wisdom. When it's all said and done, let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it a real. And let's keep it a thousand. Even in all of the sabotage, even in all of this nonsense, it still does not take away from the fact that he knows everything is the ultimate truth teller. And a prediction king strikes again. And a prediction king strikes again. Didn't he knows everything tell you guys? Didn't he bring you that heat and that fire? Didn't he keep the foot on the next? Didn't he apply unlimited pressure? Didn't he tell you that pressure does what? It bursts pipes? Did he not tell you that these classic goats and troglodytes, these Rudy Pooh and Plum Plum brains, these ultra fanboys with the ultra fanboy rhetoric who are always going to put you on detours, did he not tell you that Canelo Alvarez was going to get exposed? Isn't that what happened? So why is Canelo relevant? Why does Earl the True Spence need to fight Canelo? And if Earl the True Spence himself is thinking about fighting Canelo Alvarez, then he needs to to himself stop the presses and pump the brakes on the nonsense. And he needs to go sit down somewhere and what? Higgity fucking hush. Yes, I said it because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anybody can get it. If you're not saying the right things that you're supposed to say or doing the things you're supposed to do, you're going to be told what doesn't make sense. Canelo Alvarez does not make sense for your boxing career. The focus is undisputed. And that's what Earl the True Spence is focused on. So when you have these channels detouring you, telling you that Earl the True Spence is now looking at a Canelo fight. He's fighting for undisputed. Nothing's more important than Spence versus Crawford. See, if you know boxing, you understand how important this is. No one should be talking about anything else but that. That should be the focus. That should be the concentra concentration. That should be the thing that we talk about.
because when was the last time somebody was undisputed at 147 do you see how important this is do you see how big this is for the sport so when people say javante tank davis is the face of boxing i don't have a problem with that because i've told you guys interchangeably javante tank davis and earl the true are the face of boxing so currently right now because tank has the biggest fight in his belt that he won and he did a heck of a job everybody knows Tank is my second fighter after Earl the True Spence. I'm going to say it again. Tank is my second fighter after Earl the True Spence. So, yes, right now, as it stands, because they're interchangeable in the face of boxing, Javante Tank Davis is the face. But let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it real. Let's call a spade a spade and let's keep it a thousand. Once Earl the True Spence beats Terrence Buck Crawford, he is unquestionably, undoubtedly, and undisputably the face of boxing. There's no question about that because none of the smaller weight classes mean to boxing what 147 means. 147 is one of those prestigious weight classes. And at the end of the day, getting undisputed at 147 means a whole lot than what Tank has been able to do if we're being honest with ourselves. And fighting a, a, a fight against Terrence Buck Crawford means a whole lot more for Earl True Smith's legacy than what Javante Tank Davis has done in his. And it's not taking nothing away from Tank. It's just, let's be honest, Tank versus Ryan Garcia, on the scale of things, is not on the level of Spence versus Crawford. So right then and there, Spence becomes automatically the face of boxing. And we don't even sit there and, and let our brains rubbish behind it. If we do that, then we're operating under being coming brain full of mush and brainwashed dodo heads. And are you a fucking dodo head? I hope not. I better think not. And if you are, you need to crawl back into the hole that you came up out of. When it's all said and done in the contextualized topic of the matter and the truth of the fact that the matter is as simple as this. Canelo Alvarez is irrelevant. He's an has-been. Dimitri Bivol did the work. He tried to fight the wrong cherry and he found out that he got exposed. Even so much so that when he fought his tune-up fight against John Ryder, John Ryder even exposed him and said, man, Canelo Alvarez is done. He was supposed to knock me out and he couldn't even do that. When you have a tuna fight in Guadalajara, Mexico, a place that you don't, you never even wanted to fight. This is how you could tell how Canelo Alvarez has fallen completely. And then you have these cornballs, leopard skin, channel variations, want to sit here and tell you Earl the True Smith is going to fight Canelo at 168. Who gives a fuck about that? Earl the True Smith is going to 154 after 147. 168? That's just hearsay. That's talk. And fighters do shit like that. And people fall for that dumb shit. This is how you could tell people are fans and not real boxing connoisseurs, not real boxing commentators. They fall for anything these fighters will tell you. I wrote the truth is just saying that to market. He's saying that to build up the fight. He's saying that to get publicity and people are falling for the dumb shit. They're falling for the Kool-Aid. How can you sit there and fall for that damn Kool-Aid? He's not going to fight 168. He's going to 154 after 147. That's what he told you. If you listen to him in his real talks, in his real vernacular, in his real conversation, that's what's next. Canelo Alvarez is irrelevant. The fact that people are talking about Canelo Alvarez just shows you how much we as a people, as much as we as a Hebrew Israelite, we've lost our identity that we have to kiss these white people's ass. That's the cool part here. Ask the unadulterated. Ask the cutthroat truth teller fashion. Again, recap. The only thing that matters is Spence versus Crawford. The only thing that matters is Earl the True Spence is the face of boxing. The only thing that matters is Earl the True Spence is going to be undisputed at 147. So anyone talking about Canelo Alvarez, anyone mentioning this guy in any strength or any, basically what we would say, I or a thought of imagination. <laughs> Stop the presses and pump the brakes on the nonsense and go sit down somewhere and what? Higgity fucking hush. I keeps the foot on the whoop on the nicks. I keeps the foot on the whoop on the nicks. This is he knows everything. Check it out.